Okay, so we're going to continue on with chapter one. And so now we're going to introduce two laws that are going to be really helpful when kind of understanding how our atoms are going to combine, how different molecules react together. So this is kind of laying the foundation for us. So our first law is the law of definite proportions. And the person who created this law is Mr. Joseph Prost. Here's a picture of him and you know, you get an idea of about the year. I'm never going to ask you like who did what law, so you don't have to know like the historical stuff like this. Um, but you do want to know the name of the law and the information. So well, let's talk about this law. So this law says that all samples of a compound have the same proportions of their constituent elements. So for example, water. Water is H2O. So this means there are two hydrogen to every one oxygen. Every single time. The ratio is going to be the same every single time. So it's a two to one ratio. So if you were to divide this or do the ratio, you know, two to one or a two ratio, two times ratio. There's two times as many hydrogen as oxygen, however you want to think about it. Every time you take a sample of water, you're always going to get the exact same ratio, a two to one ratio, no matter how much water you have, a small sample or a large sample. So this slide is going to kind of show you that. So I have different samples. I have a 100 gram sample, I have a 200 gram sample, and I have a 58.44 gram sample. So I'm using this to show you that it's going to be consistent if you have nice even numbers or just random samples. So in my 100 gram sample of sodium chloride, which is just salt, I've got this many grams of sodium and this many grams of chlorine. So let's see what the ratio is from our sodium to our chlorine. Like we did with the water, it was a two to one, or two if you did two divided by one. So let's do sodium to chlorine. But let's actually flip it so that we don't get, um, let's just do this one on top. So do this one on top because it's a uh, bigger number. So let's do the mass of chlorine divided by the mass of sodium. 60.7, 39.3, and that gives me a 1.54 ratio. So the ratio of chlorine to sodium is 1.54. So let's do it again. So I have a 200 gram sample. Now I have a different amount of sodium, a different amount of chlorine. Let's do it again. Chlorine divided by sodium, see what that is. So 121.4 grams divided by 78.6 grams. That also comes out to 1.54. Well, those are nice, pretty starting numbers. But if we start off with something funky, let's do this one. Let's do chlorine ratio to sodium. So 35.44 grams of chlorine, 22.99 grams of sodium comes out also as 1.54. Okay. So this is the law of definite proportions, that your proportion of one to the other is always going to come out to be the same. No matter if you have a little bit or if you have a lot of a sample, it's going to be uh, the same, a definite proportion. All right, let's look at our second law. This is the law of multiple proportions. And this is Mr. John Dalton. You can kind of see the years there compared to our previous one. It's about the same. Now. His law says that when two elements, let's say element A and element B, form two different compounds, the masses of B that combine with one A can be expressed as a ratio of small whole numbers. That's a lot of words. You're like, what is it saying? All right, so element A could combine with only one of element B. So this would be a one to one ratio. One A to one B. Okay. Or it could be that A could go with two Bs, okay? So it's a one to two ratio. So this ratio, this one to two, they're going to be small whole numbers. So the ratio is going to be small whole numbers. You're not going to have like 10 and 42 or something. They're going to be small whole number ratios. So for example, and it could be the exact same elements, so C, um, a going to 1B, an example of this would be carbon monoxide, which is just a C and an O. Okay? But I could have the exact same one, 
I could have my A going to two Bs. So a, this could be a C going to two oxygens, which is carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is what he's saying. We're not gonna get A to a half of a B or something. It's gotta be a whole number and then they're gonna be small. So this is kind of, whoop, this is what I'm saying. So I could have C to O or a C to two O's. The difference between this guy and this guy is that he has twice as much oxygen. And so I could actually do this mathematically, put in the masses here of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, and I see that he's got twice as much, okay? So these are your laws. Your law of definite proportions and your law of multiple proportions. All right, so the next section, we're gonna start getting into the history of the atom. What is an atom made of? And how has that changed over time? So that's what we'll look at in our next lecture.